Welcome back to the Huddle on 840 Fox Sports Radio. The Huddle brought to you by 956sports.com. Served by our friends at McDonald's. Da, 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 da. I'm loving it. And by the way, guess where they ate before the show? Mickey D's. No That's doubt. Correct. Everybody should start their day off with a McDonald's breakfast. The Mc- <laughs> if only the McGriddle was available all the time. You know what? And we talked about this. I don't know if uh, up, up north you've seen this, but uh, I know like in South Dakota they have the uh, the bagels. Yeah, oh, those were awesome. Those they don't have awesome. those here. I don't know. It kills me. <sighs> Maybe if I'd we had some, if we had a high <laughs> high falutin person at Mickey D's, we could talk to. Yeah. We have any any juice there? Or they just want the show. One, just one. <laughs> <laughs> coach Scott Ford of the Hidalgo Pirates joining us here in the huddle on 840 Fox Sports Radio. Now, Coach, you know, the success that we were talking about uh, that you're going to build with the Pirates, you've had success in Los Fresnos already. Mm-hmm. Have uh, quite a few guys that are playing uh, collegiate ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, name some of the guys that you've had, that you've coached that are now, you know, playing elsewhere. Well, one of the first kids that we had that, that got out that uh, had the vision and the work and the grades was Eric Walker. A lot of people may not remember him, but those of us that coach him certainly do. He actually mentored Benavides and Atkinson. You know, he was a the guy they looked up to, and he showed them how to work, and they kind of followed his lead. He was a four-year starter at Texas Lutheran, was a captain, uh, played defensive line for them. Uh, and, of course, we had both the Springers. Uh, Jeremy was at UTEP, and Justin was a starting linebacker at Kansas. Jeremy was actually a quarterback for us. Uh he didn't actually start at quarterback for us until his senior year because we had Brandon Kretz. But Jeremy went on, and, and, and UTEP came down and looked at him and signed him as a quarterback. And But after a year, they moved him to linebacker. And wow. uh, he's a very motivated young man. He started four years for him at linebacker. Uh, I'm actually trying to get him hired over at Hidalgo, but we're working on it because he has a business degree. But hopefully we can get him because he, like, he'll, he'll be a head football coach one day if that's what his aspirations are. Funny story. Uh, after his redshirt year, he started at linebacker that one year. And, and once, the, of course, you go through the recruiting process, and Coach Price, as the head coach out at UTEP, made a comment to the newspaper that they were going to recruit a lot of, a lot of linebackers because he wasn't going to play with a converted li- uh, quarterback, that linebacker. Wow. Yeah, Jeremy put that up on his mirror, and Jeremy started every year he was there. So that's the kind of kid he was. And, uh, and I know last year Justin uh, was like the assistant strength conditioning at Kansas, doing doing some work there. I know Coach Weiss came in, and, uh, you know, Justin indicated that uh, he's a no-nonsense guy. He's not putting up with much anything. I, I don't know what Justin's plans are. But uh, we had a Cy Rivera who went to, and played at TLU receiver. He was a, a, a great kick returner for us. And obviously we've got Mario. uh got Eloy at UTEP, Atkinson. He's a starting center at UTEP. He's got one more year. And then we have Mario Benavides, who's a starting center at Louisville. Who we and, just uh, had on the show a few weeks back, and mm-hmm. uh, he informed us that he's ranked number two on a Mel Kuyper's big board as mm-hmm. uh, as linemen, as as centers. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, you know, just uh, all those kids, uh, Mario, and those guys are the one thing that's they're they're all articulate and they're well spoken and uh, very conscientious and uh, and mannerly. And one of the reasons when your best players are like that, you know, the rest of them don't have a choice. Everybody's got to fall on the line. So, and that's one of the things I told our kids. We're going to, you know, identify – some of you guys have been identified as a potential college player. Our best players are returning starters. We don't think it's going to be easy street. You're going you're gonna to be worked harder than anybody. You know, that's the way it has to be. But Mario, uh, you know, when he went to Louisville that first year, he kind of mentored under – I think the guy's name's Eric Wood, who was his first-round draft pick for the Bills. And I could tell then that Mario, I guess after he felt like after being there a year, he could do the same thing. And I just hope he stays healthy and uh, continues on his path. And, you know, it's a real testament to all those kids and the people of Los Fresnos because, you know, no one coach wins anything. We had a special thing there uh, going with the community and the people and the kids and the players and the coaches. There was just a lot of talented coaches and kids there at that time. And it had, not for them, I wouldn't be sitting here as Hidalgo's head coach. So – you got to be lucky too, and I feel fortunate and blessed to have coached all those kids. And uh, still, they do a pretty good job. We stay in touch and, and all those things. So that's that's what it's all about. Well, I'll tell you what: if any community backs their football team, you're not going to find a more fervent community than Hidalgo that uh, that gets on board that pirate ship and says, "Let's set sail and let's let's move on with this." Because I mean, they're just all about that. Well, that's good to hear. That's what I've heard, and I'm looking for. Hopefully, we'll give them a reason to to get excited. It's definitely will. Coach Scott Ford of the Hidalgo Pirates joining us here. Uh, let, let's touch on Mario. We, you know, we had him on the show a few weeks ago, and and he he brought up how you were very instrumental to the success that he's had. And you just said a term that kind of sparked something. You're you're identified as a potential college player. What do you look for? Well, you have to have some God given things. 
uh, to be a, a D1 college football player, let's, right. look, let's face it. You know, Mario's 6'4", 300 pounds. Eloy's 6'3", 290. Springers are both 6'4", you know, 240 for Justin, 225. So you have to have that. But I've coached a lot of kids with those things. But really, the best ones I've had, the Paul Thompsons, I coached Tommy Harris, who, uh, you know, started for the Bears for years. They're self-motivated. They're goal-driven. And that's just something that they had. You know, that's not, no credit to anybody but them and, and, their, and their parents, I guess. Uh, just uh, they had goals and they worked hard and they were there every day and they were leaders. And, you know, and then when, when you have the physical combined with that, well, then you got something. And that's what all those – every D1 kid I've ever coached has had those things. I've never coached – and I've coached all over the state. I've never coached a, quote – I don't even want to say it, but I've never coached a thug or a kid that uh, we had to beg to come to workouts. I've never coached one of those kids that went on – to play Division One college football. Right. I've, never, and I've never had a kid that I had to beg to take the SAT and go play college football. They did all those things, you know. So those things are, are what they all had in common. And that's that's instrumental going back to the house and, 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 and what they get at, the, at home and, and mm-hmm. take with them when they go to school. That's a good point. I hadn't really thought of it, but every one of those kids, from Tommy Harris to Paul Thompson to uh, coach a kid named Quintus Combi at Cleveland and went to Kentucky, they all came from two-parent households and had a solid foundation at home. And that, that's probably, obviously, one of the reasons they were uh, goal-oriented and, and stayed on track. So It's staying together like that. Mm-hmm. All right, Coach Scott Ford of the Hidalgo Pirates joining us here in the Huddle on 840 Fox Sports Radio. Now, I remember we talked uh, a while ago. You were at, I think, uh, I probably just started the website uh, mm-hmm. one or two years. And you told me that uh, you had played uh, the same year as the movie uh, Friday Night Lights. You were, I can't remember. You played like, were you involved like your your high school team or anything like that? Or yes, what? yeah, that was a that was a year after I graduated. Year after you graduated, but I was I was actually initially at Sam Houston as a wide receiver, red shirting. So oh. that Saturday morning we lifted the red shirts lifted, and I drove to Marshall, which is about three and a half hours. I was there on the sideline for the Permian game. Where are you really? When we beat Permian thirteen to twelve, you know, and that's that's a program, and that's the reason I think that you can, as long as you have a few things in place build a program wherever you go because Marshall was the doormat of football when Dennis Parker took the job in 85. Okay. He struggled, struggled, struggled until a group of kids finally said, you know what, we're going to do it his way. And then not when he took the job, if somebody would told anybody in Marshall that they were going to beat Odessa Permian, they had locked you up, <laughs> you know, and they did. And he ended up winning the state championship in 1990. But yeah, the, the movie doesn't really, uh, it doesn't do the Nah, I didn't like the story. movie because it's not factual, uh, you know. Uh, but at any rate, yes, I was there for the game, <laughs> and there's, there's a little bit of history there with, with, with that deal. So what do you remember that's different from the movie? What do you – Well, uh, Marshall beat Permian number one, and I think in the movie, if I'm not mistaken, Permian beats Marshall. And uh, the running back oh, yeah. the running back was already hurt, Booby. Yeah. And I think in the movie he gets hurt, and, and he got he tore his ACL in a scrimmage. It wasn't a game, yeah, so that was a little bit started. inaccurate. And then, uh, you know, that year, it was, I guess it's frustrating personally because Marshall that year had Dallas Carter beat, and that's the year that Dallas Carter had all the kids yeah. that had gone to jail and the whole thing. And they, they played with absolutely no class. At so, all. so that was true then? In the movie? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, yes. And uh, <laughs> they ran a kickoff back with just a few seconds left and ended up throwing a, a tight end dump pass to Jesse Armstead with one second left to beat us. So I was pretty heartbroken over that because I was still close with a lot of those guys. So that part of it bothered me personally. But, uh, hey, it's still a good movie. But when you're from Marshall and you helped build that thing and you were there, it's a little frustrating not to get your due. Did you watch the TV show then? I've just seen bits and pieces of it. I, I really, like I said, right now I don't even have TV. But <laughs> yeah. I, I never. The only thing I've ever watched uh, regularly was Seinfeld. That's my favorite sitcom. And now that that's gone off the air, you know, I haven't I haven't found anything to really replace that. Uh, Jake can get you into all the music shows. He's he's oh, got you know American Idol and which is the other one? The vo- he likes The Voice or the no? What's the the a cappella group one? What's that one you like? See, the sing off. The sing off. The sing off. Tell me, does that? Tell me that's not true. No, we're not you know making what? we're not making this up, Coach. <laughs> I, I can't. I you know my wife and I we need to we need to have shows. When I'm home, we need to have shows that we can watch. And she doesn't like like the crime stuff that I like to watch. Mm-hmm. So you know 
I we watch the sing off. Blame it on the American wife. Idol. Here mean, comes no, the text. Here comes the text. It's something mutual. <laughs> it's something mutual. I can't watch. I can't watch uh, the Kardashian ones or anything like that. Yeah. So you, you know, don't like reality shows unless they're no, singing. God, Funny, no. you were talking about Lamar Odom and <laughs> yeah, how good that he's all looking. About? I know that stuff because my wife gets People magazine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my wife does. Uh, she actually watches Keeping Up with the Kardashians. If I walk through, I will stop just for get a visual. You know, <laughs> <laughs> daily inspiration there. <sighs> All right, I'm on my way. <laughs> hey, but you're, um, how long until your family comes down then? Because we talked about she that. actually flew down. Uh, her and Will, my nine year old boy, uh, our, our nine year old boy, they flew down and spent five days. And then I'm going back up for spring break, but they won't be down uh, until June. So he's got to finish out school. We felt like that's what was best yeah, for him. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. nine years old. He's got friends. He's on a basketball team, baseball team. The last thing I want to do was was pull him out of that routine. Let's let him get down here in the summer, transition in, get him in a baseball league, let him meet friends, and give him a fresh start on a new school year. So mm-hmm. that's you know part of it. Sacrifice. You know nobody has any idea how much a wife sacrifices. And sure. I've got a great coach's wife, and I'm very fortunate. Anybody that knows her will testify to that. So uh, she's she's part of big part of the team. Any, and and as a self-confessed baseball, mm-hmm. you know, player, mm-hmm. um, do you guide your son now at nine? Do you say, okay, this is baseball, this is football, you know, this is soccer? Mm-hmm. Or, uh, how, do, how do you work that? Well, I made a decision because uh, I can remember being a little league baseball player and seeing the way some of the dads acted. Mm-hmm. And even as a 10-year-old, I recognized that there was something <laughs> infinitely <laughs> wrong with that. So I've, what I've done is I've stayed out of his way, and I've just supported him. And if he's playing soccer, I'll get in the backyard and kick the soccer ball. If he's playing baseball, I'll throw him BP. I'll throw him passes, but I don't really coach him. And I keep my mouth shut at every game and just let him be a kid. So my, the most important thing for kids his age is to have fun. You know, you want them to associate athletics or sports with having fun right. and not be so focused on winning, losing, or how many points they score or, or who gets the MVP or anything like that. And I constantly tell him I love him. And as long as you do your best, you that's know, all you can that's ask all for. I can ask. So that's kind of as a family the, the way we I wish there was more that. parents like you that were, <laughs> that were out there because, <laughs> you know, I mean, as a volunteer, and I and I volunteered before to coach these mm-hmm. kids, and, and my first meeting is is with the parents, and you know, I I flat out tell them the Yankees are not calling us. You know, hey, we saw that little scrappy six year old that you got on your T ball team, and we want to start developing developing them into the farm system. Right. That's not going to happen. You know, we're just here to lay down the, the foundation. We're going to have fun. Score doesn't matter. You know, they're mm-hmm. going to score a lot of points. We're going to score a lot of points. Right. The most we can score is five per inning, and, you know, you, you build it from there. But, you know, you've got some parents that are just like, no, Mijito's going to play, and he's going to play it like this. And, you know, I, I, <laughs> well, I've always said the worst the worst coaching job in high school is a head baseball coach because everybody mm-hmm. has been involved just enough <laughs> to think that they know <laughs> everything. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. If I had a dime for every Little League All-Star that's uh, come through, I'd be a rich man. So. <laughs> I used to get Evo 